seven locomobile. And locomobiles were made until 1929. And I have been selected to drive it. Driving is what it's all about for these vintage auto owners. They're members of the Horseless Carriage Club of America, folks who believe old cars are meant to be out on the open road. Take a look around. We'll come thousands of miles to find a road that nobody's on. These are the cars that saw the highway before there were highways. These are the cars that the doctors and the attorneys and the farmers bought to get to town in. Well, the Horseless Carriage Club started in Los Angeles in 1937. And the fellow that really started it, Artui, uh, was renting cars out to the movies, and it was his way of getting to know where all the other cars are. Three, four thousand members around the world. We get together several times a year. Uh, most of us participate maybe in one tour a year. Beautiful day we were having today. A lot of nice cars on this tour. You can find tours like this all around the country, especially in places with good rural roads and that made the western end of Lake Superior unnatural for the club's national tour. I knew this was gonna be good, because every time you come to Wisconsin, you know they've got some of the best world uh, roads here in the United States. And to be able to drive down the road and not have a lot of traffic, a lot of heavy trucks, a lot of stop signs. These cars are truly pioneers, each of them built prior to 1916, and every one of them has a story. My grandfather bought this car on May 29th, 1914, and he paid $539 for it, and he purchased, purchased it from the Lewis Shepke Hardware Store in Elma Center, Wisconsin. This is a 1913 Oakland, what they called the 660, was a six-cylinder 60 horse made in uh, Pontiac, Michigan, Oakland County. That's where they came up with the name. This is a 1904 Oldsmobile. It's one cylinder, six horsepower. Uh, it'll do about 25 miles an hour. Gets about 20 miles to the gallon. We found this car, a friend had it. Uh, it was assembled at the 1915 World's Fair in San Francisco. They had a display, Henry Ford would assemble Model Ts and you could watch your car being assembled and buy it and drive it home right from the fair. The inventors and engineers who designed and built these early autos were mostly working without a road map, and that led to some very interesting early attempts. At the beginning, people really didn't know what the car was going to be. So you have people trying all different sorts of things, partly because they were clever and thought they had a better idea, partly to overcome patents that other car companies have had. But it's uh, everybody who's experimenting to see what worked. Example A. The Stanley Steamer. The Stanley twins, brothers, invented it and built it about 1898. And um, they uh, continued to build them really in kind of limited, limited numbers, maybe several hundred a year, all the way to 1924. One of the great features of a Stanley is there's no clutch no transmission, and you're at full torque all the time. Stanley was just one of dozens of companies that popped up in the early years, each building automobiles with their own distinct flair. There's probably 25 to 40,000 cars still existing worldwide. It's the mystique of what used to be. It's kind of like reliving history. That's fun. Um, and I just like old machinery, and that's fun. Owners of these early cars know a day on the road can bring untold adventure, so it's a good idea to take along some extra equipment and a sense of humor. You need a pair of pliers and a screwdriver, hopefully a can of water, uh, tire pump, a spare inner tube, and uh, a lot of curse words. Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> 
uh, yeah, it's been dripping uh, a bit here and there. But, uh, nothing uh, really serious yet, but if we deal with it and later on when we pull it all apart, we'll find the spot and fix it. <laughs> you know, there's a certain percentage of people in this world that are mechanically inclined. And the rest of them better not an old, old car because <laughs> these cars require a certain amount of work. Any work involved is a labor of love for these car owners. It's all about getting out on the road to see and be seen. This is a fantasy world and you see these cars and you just look at them and say, would I love to be in that car driving down the road? We're trying to preserve them so they're not sitting in garages, they're not sitting in the they're actually out where people can, can look at them and enjoy them. These are the pioneers, these are the veteran cars that started it all. It's, it's fun to be a part of that history. Ready to go? Yeah. Okay. Here we go.